Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick review of graphing. So see, I have graph paper here. If you have graph paper, it's always easier to graph on graph paper than it is on line paper. But line paper will work. Plain white paper will work. Graph paper just makes the whole process easier. So this is for those of you who are struggling just graphing your lines. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my name at the top of the page. Whoa, it's blurry. There's my name at the top of the page. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make a problem to do. So we're just going to do y equals 5x plus, not 5, 5 is too big, 3x plus 2. So just a pretty straightforward e equation, nothing big. So what we want to do is we need to remember y equals mx plus b. So m represents slope. And slope is rise over run, change in y over change in x. And again, this means change. So it's important that we understand all the things I'm using as symbols. So slope, rise over run, change in y over change in x. You might remember this formula, which I absolutely hate. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I think this formula is pretty obnoxious. I like this better. What is the difference between the y coordinates? What's the difference between the x coordinates? I find it to be more helpful. It's still really blurry. And so I use this very rarely. I use this constantly. And so that's what slope is. Slope is a lot of things, but it's basically your change in y over your change in x. Your rise over run is what we're going to use mostly for as we graph. This idea is what we're going to use mostly when we're graphing. B is the y-intercept. And so y-intercepts meaning when it crosses the y-axis. So value on the y-axis. And one thing that's important to remember is always, if I'm looking for intercepts, anytime I'm looking for intercepts, I can find them in a very simple way. It's kind of just this understanding of what's happening. So on a on any graph piece of any coordinate plane, the y-intercept, which is this vertical line here, is all points such that it's zero comma y. Because I don't move left or right, I just move that way. And so we can actually define the y-axis as the line x equals zero. That confuses a lot of people. But basically on the y-axis, x is always zero. On the x-axis, if we were looking for x-intercepts, this is just kind of more of a note, it's always x comma zero. So y is equal to zero on the x-axis. So that's important if we ever, at, get, when we get later, we're gonna be doing a lot of intercepts this year. And so understanding this idea is that on the every point on the x-axis is x comma zero, and every point on the y-axis is zero comma y or these two relationships. So anyway, going back to the y-intercept, in this equation, my general equation, if x is zero, y equals m times zero plus b, I always end up with y equals b, and that's why b is the y-intercept. So that's why that works. Okay, so going back to the equation I had originally, y equals three x plus two, the first thing I do is identify m and b, so m equals 3 and b equals 2. I will start by creating my graph paper. And so even though I have a grid, I need to put my x and y axis on. I just usually draw them. I don't put any arrows on anything. Um, it's kind of understood that they go forever. Um, if I am using graph paper, I don't actually do anything else to prepare my grid. I'm just going to use the squares. So I know I don't need to draw the tick marks. If it makes you feel better, you can. But I know that... I'm counting by ones. And as the beauty of it is we assume you're counting by ones unless you tell us otherwise, which is something you need to be watching when you look at a graph. If they don't tell you, you can say, oh, that's one. If it looks like this, this is ones. But if they put a number on it, then they're counting by that number. So it's important to remember that. Anyway, B is two. B is also our y-intercept. So on the y-axis, I am at two. So really, one, another way to think about B is I have 0, 2. So just something to think about. That's the point you're plotting. And remember, 0 
that it's really annoying because you've got rise over run, which means y is on top, y is my up and down movement. And then we have our x at intercepts, which are x comma y, and that can be a little bit confusing that y goes first in one and x goes first in the other. So just kind of keep that in mind. But the ordered pair stands for alphabetical order. At least that's what I always told myself. So that I could keep it try keep track of it. So then zero comma two. Then my slope is three. And so thinking of the rise over run analogy, I have three over what? Well, it I needs to be still be three. So it's one, three divided by one. So whenever you just have a number, you stick a one under that number. It's pretty straightforward. So rise means move up and down. So my up movement will be three. And run means left and right. So I'm going to go right one. Since they're both, since it's a positive number, it's up and right. I can also do down three and left one because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So these are both the same as this slope. So those are my movements. So I'm going to go up three squares and write one square. I'm out of space on my graph. So that's why I'm going to go back to the beginning. So the other way I think about with B is B means begin. So it helps me remember what I'm doing. So I'm back at B. And so then I'm going to go down three squares and write one square and down three squares and write one square and so on. I mean, excuse me, left one square. So down three left, down three left, up three right. And so you notice they're in a straight line. If you are concerned about straight lines, um, any, basically any edge will help you draw a straight line. So I'm just using this as my edge and now I can draw a straight line. You could use the side of a stapler if you wanted. You could use, I, I don't recommend it, but you could use the side of your phone. Um, you could use any piece of paper you have handy, whatever. There's my line. And so this is all we're practicing today is this idea of drawing our lines. So that's all this video is about. I won't get into anything else. So let's just do it now that we have our main example done. And we kind of talked about some of the words and all of that nonsense. Let's just do another one. So y equals negative two thirds x plus five. Okay. So b is five. I'm going to start with that. And m is negative two thirds. So I need more up because I got to go all the way up to five. So I'm going to kind of straighten, set my stuff up so I can get to five easily. Notice I didn't put any tick marks on. Can't even see what I'm doing. There you go. So I didn't put any tick marks on because I'm just going to use the graph paper. And then this negative two thirds. So that's down because it's negative. I'm going to use an arrow down two and we always go right, right three. Sometimes when we do negatives, we apply it to both. And if you apply it to both, you're actually doing a positive move. So then the other way I can do this is up through two if I'm running out of room and left. Those are the same. So I'm going to go down two squares, right three squares, down two squares, right three squares. You can kind of see that down two, right three. I'm out of room. So I'll go back to the beginning, up two and left. Okay, and again, if you want a straight line, there you go. And that's that. So those ones are straightforward. No, these are in already slope intercept form. Every now and then, you may come across something that's not. So if you need to pause the screen, I'm about to turn the page, so things are going to disappear. Go ahead. Um, it's up to you. You're just maybe watching this to figure out what to do. And so sometimes, and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, sometimes I'm given a problem that's not in slope intercept form. New page, new name. Okay. And so I have, let's say, 3x minus 5y equals... Okay, so let's say I have this problem. Now there are two ways to solve this problem. One is to solve for y, and then I can graph it normally. Sometimes that's a little frustrating, and I'm actually going to change this number to 15. No, 30. 30. So I can solve for y, and I'll go ahead and do that first. 
subtract 3x from both sides. 3x and 30 are not like terms. Negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 30. Then I'm going to divide by negative 5. Now, when I'm dividing, and there's more than one, there's a plus sign over here, I have to remember to kind of to distribute the dividing and get everybody. Okay. Okay. So then I have y equals 3 fifths, x minus 6, and now I'm in slope intercept form. The other negative divided by the negative became positive. Oh my goodness, blurry, blurry, blurry. Sorry. Still blurry. Okay. That's somewhat better. So we have y is now alone, and then I have my slope and my order. So then I can graph it here. But I can also do something else. So I like to show ex other ways just so that I have options. Um, my This is my preferred way to graph this, is to use the intercepts. And you can't see the intercepts. Intercepts. But we did talk about them, that x-intercepts can be found by letting y equal 0, and y-intercepts can be found by letting x equal 0. So we know the y-intercept from this is now negative 6, but let's see if we can find it in this format. So my original equation was 3x minus 5y equals 30. And so to find the x-intercept, I'm going to let y be 0. So I'll have 3x minus 0 equals 30, or 3x equals 30, and x equals 10. And and alternatively, to find the y-intercept, I let y be 0. So then I have three, 0 minus 5y equals 30, or negative 5y equals 30, and so y equals negative 6. And then you can see I have both an x and y-intercept. Let me show you how to graph this. So my x-intercept is, of course, 10 comma 0. And my y-intercept is negative 6, 0, negative 6. So that's the other way to think about those is as ordered pairs. And so I'm going to go ahead and prepare my graph paper. And because I don't want to use the whole paper, I'm kind of I'm going to count by twos this time. So this time, since I'm counting by something else, see I write 2, 4, 6. And usually that's all I would write, but I'm going to go ahead and count out to 10. Same thing though in this way, six. And one number is usually enough to indicate what you're counting by. Just so you know, um, eight. And so when it gets a little crowded with my numbers, like this will be negative four and I won't necessarily write everything else down. I kind of just leave it there. So my green point, 10 comma zero, and my blue point, negative zero negative six there's my two points and then my line and again using something for a straight edge right that so now I have a line so I actually really like this way of graphing but you'll notice when I was creating my problem I changed this from 10 to 30 and that's so I could get a nice x-intercept it was going to be a bad x-intercept if I left it at 10 and so then this way wouldn't have worked very nice, but that's one way to do it. So let me just show you that we got the same graph. I'll graph this now over here the same way. And so I start at, I'm going to count by twos again. Let it dry, let it dry, let it dry. When it stops shining, it's easy to erase. When it's wet, it's harder. Anyway, four, six, eight, ten. So my y-intercept of negative six. What's cool about this is by counting, it, you think, well, that's gonna make the slope harder, but it isn't. Because I'm still gonna go up three and over five, and I really went up six over ten. But six over ten is the same as three over five. So I don't have to worry about counting anything else. I can just use the squares anyway. 
and see how I got the same line. And so either way will work. It's just a matter of your preference in the work you want to do. Now, I did a lot of work because I was explaining this, but I can actually look at this and go, okay, the x-intercept is 10 and the y-intercept is negative 6 just by doing what I call the thumb method. My thumb's a little too big these days, but the cover-up method. And just because I'm plugging in 0, I solve these two equations, which I can solve quickly. Okay, so just something to think about. That's your basic idea of what you can do with graphing. It's pretty straightforward if you, and you probably have a remembrance of this somewhere. I'm not saying it's the greatest, I, I know how to do everything, but there's a remembrance. So the front page talks about slope intercept form. My other page is all about how do I do it if it's in slope intercept form. And then this page is, well, what if it's not? Then what? So this is the then what page. All right, I hope you have a great day. I will talk to you another time.